Hi everybody, I'm Zilla Blitz and welcome to episode two in our campaign playthrough with Save South Vietnam. When we last left off, we had finished up the year and survived 1965. As we head into 1966, the central part of South Vietnam is afire with conflict and Saigon is far from safe. Let's jump in, do a quick overview of how things look and get started with 1966. As we take a look at the situation in January 1966, we can see just by the colors that things aren't going that well. Orange and red are bad for us. Gray, blue, and yellow are good for us, so you get the picture. If we look at the southern part of South Vietnam, we can see that Mekong and Buen Ho are pretty, in pretty good shape. Saigon, still a lot to be worked on, and we have a number of units that are almost fully depleted that we'll talk about in a little bit. So the situation's still a little bit unbalanced. We're gonna to need to bring more reinforcements up here in 1966 to help shore up Saigon. The middle of the map is a complete mess. We've got North Vietnamese Army regiments in the remote areas that are likely to drop down. We've got strong political influence in these main three provinces. We should be able to, and we've also got a lot of anti-air presence here as well. So my goal, I think, is going to be to try to keep our helicopters out of here, use our ground troops, because the political situation's already bad already. So bringing in ground troops that make the political situation worse really isn't going to impact things any more than they already are because the maximum is minus 10. So hopefully we can keep this stable in the course of 1966. Looking to the north, we can see we've got some North Vietnamese Army regiments in two provinces and then some Viet Cong in our other third province, Da Nang province here. So things we're going to have to keep an eye on in 1966. So our big goal in the first half of 1966 is to try to not lose these provinces here and try to shore up Saigon by moving up some of our ground troops. We'll be back in six months to take a look to see how we did. So we're back, it's July 1966, and if I had to sum up the last six months, I'd say moderate gains, big losses. Let's go take a look at the southern part of the country and see how we did. So in the southern part of the country, we've done okay. We've Mekong region still stable, Bien Ho, we've cleaned out the North Vietnamese Army regiments up in the remote lands and somewhat stabilized this region as best we can, region as best we can with, considering we've got a political cadre in there. Let's take a close up look at Saigon. If we take a close up look in Saigon, we've done pretty well. We've taken care of the North Vietnamese Army regiments. We've reduced the ground forces, the Viet Cong forces here. We've got a South Vietnamese Army regiment in here to help stabilize the region. So this has become a lot less electric over the past six months. Uh, however, you'll notice that we've got a lot less troops here. Uh, two of our infantry brigades have had to pull back to get be recovered. We've got these helicopter units at maximum damage as well. And we'll talk a little bit about how units recover as we look at the central area because that's kind of a big factor. And what I'm thinking is that big picture problem that we're looking at. So let's go to the central area and talk about that. In the middle part of the country, we've made gains. We've taken care of some of the North Vietnamese Army regiments up in the remote lands. Big battle coming up here in Queen, uh, Quang Nai in terms of North Vietnamese Army regiments have just moved down into the populated area. We've got some forces ready to come in. This is gonna be a bigger battle, kind of a long drawn out contest in the fall. But the problem that we're facing now is twofold. First up, we have the Tet Offensive that's possibly, quite likely, starting in six months. And the timing of that, we have a lot of units that are damaged. And so I wanna talk a little bit about how the Tet Offensive works and then how unit recovery works, because that I think is our biggest problem right now. So let's start with the Tet Offensive. So the way the Tet Offensive works is that in the entire force pool, there are 25 of these political cadres. And every January they replenish. So you roll some dice and you bring in some new re re reinforcements and these political cadres, if you would, uh, replenish across South Vietnam. Now, there's 25 in the total force pool. If at the end of any kind of replenishment in January, when that happens, all 25 of these are on the, on the map at once, that triggers the first Tet Offensive. Now, we have eight to what, 17? of the 25 are on the map right now. We haven't had much luck getting any of these removed. They're very hard to remove. It's kind of a low dice roll in order to be able to get one or possibly two off the map, but it's, it's not likely it's gonna happen. And that means it looks like in January, the replenishment value, if we roll on two dice higher than a five, we're gonna bring all of the political cadres onto the map and that's gonna trigger a Tet Offensive. The Tet Offensive works is that every single one of these political cadres turns into a Viet Cong military force, kind of signaling the uprising of the Viet Cong within those regions. So we're gonna have a massive military conflict coming in about six months. Here's our other problem. 
If we zoom in and take a look at some of these units now in the um, Queen Anne region here, so we can see that these are all at three step losses. If we go up to the remote lands, we can see here, these are all at three step losses. And so we have to kind of start recovering these units. And let's talk a little bit about how you recover units in the game, because that's an important part of the strategy too. All right, to talk a little bit about how recovery works, I've pulled down one of our depleted helicopters from the Saigon region and our South Vietnamese army region from the Saigon region uh, as well. I'll put those back after I'm done. So in the game, there are, th there's two ways to recover units and it depends on what kind of unit it is as to how you recover it. The ground units we have for different types of US ground units, we have two different types. We have headquarter brigades, and then we have line brigades. And the line brigades are symbolized by these black and white bars behind the unit. Now, for the headquarter brigades, we can re recover them by bringing them down into a base. And then for each turn they sit in a base, they recover one step. Likewise, that's how helicopters work as well. So this helicopter that has two step losses, we can bring it down during the movement. Later in that, that season, it's going to replenish one point. We could bring it back out with one hit point if we wanted to, or we could let it uh, rest another season, bring it back out with two strength points. Likewise, uh, South Vietnamese army regiments do the same thing. They move into a base area as well. However, a base area can only perform one step replenishment on each type of unit. So we had, if we had a headquarters unit, a South Vietnamese Army Brigade and a helicopter unit in the same base, each one of those three could recover one strength point. However, if we had two headquarter units, we couldn't do that, right? Because the base can only replenish one strength point. Likewise, with South Vietnamese Army units, they can only replenish in a base where the police force has been built up. And we're going to talk, it's probably in the next episode, about how we build up the South Vietnamese Army. But right now, that means that our South Vietnamese Army units can only replenish in the Mekong region, because that's the only place where we've got an active South Vietnamese police force. However, the bigger thing is that line brigades, recovery planet, recover in a different way. For a line brigade, we're going to take them once. They could be moved at any time, but generally you probably want to do it when they're fully depleted. We have to move them to a special recovery area, sim symbolizing out of the region, if you would. And so what happens for them is we take the units at any point in time, and I'll show you where they go. For those units in their movement phase, they drop up here above this area that's called the Line Brigade Recovery Area. We'll get some letters covering up, and we can see we got the, the 1st Infantry Brigade is in here now. So in the first turn, they move up and then in, and then subsequent turns for each season, they recover one step loss. So the whole process to bring back one of these line brigades takes a whole year. And so that becomes a problem because if you'll notice, as we look around on the map, you look around, we have a number of line brigades that have to be replenished, recovered. We have a number of uh, headquarter brigades that have to be recovered. A lot of our helicopters are damaged. We've got a lot of recovery left to do. and We've only got six months left to do it. We've actually got five line brigades now that are fully uh, in need of recovery and are knocked out of action. So when the Tet Offensive comes, if it comes in six months, I'm a little bit worried that we're not going to be ready. So one of the things we have to do over these next six months, in addition to fighting the North Viet Cong, the North Vietnamese and the Viet Cong, is we have to somehow figure out how we're going to recover our troops to be ready for a very likely Tet Offensive in January. And so that's going to be the, the kind of the, the area of focus over the next six months is recovery to build up our troop strength so that we can be ready if there's a Tet Offensive in January. In addition to that, we've also got to somehow figure out how to take care of Da Nang, which is up to seven strengths of Viet Cong forces, gradually growing in strength. By January, this will have fallen unless we address this challenge. Otherwise, things have stayed relatively the same in our northern, northern two provinces. So we'll be back in six months. Hopefully we can take care of this battle in Quang Nai, and hopefully we can also reduce Da Nang and then not and kind of make a little bit more progress in this central region, keep Saigon stable. But the big thing that we have to work on is recovery, recovery for our troops because we are expecting a very likely early Tet Offensive in 1966. So we'll see you in six months to see how we've done. December 1966, we've advanced six months. The last six months have actually been really good for us. Let's take a look. Mekong region relatively stable, pretty quiet in Bien Ho, and look at Saigon. We actually took out one of their political cadres, so this could actually get to a point where the Viet Cong are unable to raise forces in a season if we can keep up the, the good progress there.
Central region is still aflame with the insurgency in that the political cadres are still going very strong in Queen An and then in Cam Ranh here. We were able to considerably weaken the effort in Quang Nai, a relatively extended military conflict. We've taken out all the North Vietnamese um, army brigades that were up here in the, in the remote regions. We've really weakened the central area here, and we also got fortunate and took out two political cadres here. That means because they've lost so many political cadres, even with the reinforcements coming this uh, season, there will not be a Tet Offensive this year. So that is good for us, I think. Let's take a look at the northern provinces. Northern provinces as well. We just had a rather extended campaign in the fall season here, the winter in Da Nang, reduced significantly the Viet Cong presence in this area, although you can see that uh, this line brigade, this line brigade, but we have to pull off the line and most everything else has suffered two step losses. So significant weakening of our military forces here, but we did reduce the presence. I think we're going to have, I think we have enough troops to take care of it as well. So I think we're okay there. Hue, we weren't able to do anything up, but in some extended air campaigns, we brought up um, helicopter based units and took care of the, uh, the two North Vietnamese brigades that were in Quang Tri. So sig significantly reducing their presence here. And all in all, all in all, I think we're doing okay now. But we're going to come back in January, just a month's time, because now we get the influx of reinforcements for the North Vietnamese Army Brigades, as well as another wave of political cadres. So let's see what the map looks like after that happens. January 1967, and we've had a new influx of political cadres and North Vietnamese Army Brigades. Let's see how things look. All in all, cautiously optimistic here, but let's take a look. South Viet, the southern part of South Vietnam, not too bad. Very importantly, Saigon had nothing happen to it. It was relatively quiet. Now, the Mekong region did have two political cadre units influence. It's been quiet and all in our favor so far, but that's a little bit different right now. Down here in uh, Bien Ho, likewise, uh, only one uh, brigade that has come into the remote area there. So not too bad. But let's take a look now at Mekong because I want to explain how we build the South Vietnamese army and this would be a good time to do that. One thing I did want to add as we talk about this explanation is that we have been able to successfully build one South Vietnamese Army Brigade, an airborne unit. That gives us the one that we've built and the one we started the game with. But let's learn how we build the South Vietnamese Army. Now, in the Mekong region, it's minus four in the populated area, all of the political influence. So you might be thinking, okay, this is minus four. We're going to start to see Viet Cong forces here. However, the Mekong region started with a police force, and that's represented in their political tracker here. So let's go take a look at that to see how this works. So keep in mind the minus four from this region, and then we look up here. The police force currently is at level six. So the police force aren't represented by counters on the map itself. They're represented in this kind of political tracker box of which each province has one. Now this started the game with one. But this gives us a police force of six, and they give us a political points of 12, plus 12. So considering the minus four we have from the political cadres and the police force, that's still going to leave us at a plus eight. And you'll notice that when we're recruiting, because plus eight means police adds one, when we get to that recruiting phase for police and, and North Viet and Viet Cong forces, we're still going to add one more police and go like that to the area which is pretty cool. So that means even though there's political cadres in the area, because the police force in the Mekong region is so strong, they aren't able to have enough influence to be able to derail our progress in that province. Furthermore, there's a dotted line here. Right now it's at six. There's a dotted line here at five. Once you get to that dotted line or beyond, there's a recruitment phase in each turn and we can remove four police points and instead take those four points and turn them into a South Vietnamese Army Brigade. So that gives you an idea. It takes about a year, for example, then, because it goes up, you know, one per season, four to build it. So over the course of a year, we can build one brigade in this region. So one of the long-term goals we're trying to do is to get these other regions like Saigon and Bien Ho up into this positive so we can start recruiting police there, that will negate the influence of the political cadres and allow us to start building up our police force, which will allow us slowly over time to start to recruit um, North Vietnamese, uh, South Vietnamese army brigades. So right now we're at six. If we were to build one, we'd go down all the way down to two, which would be four 
and there's political cadres there, minus four should give us a zero, which means we wouldn't get any additional police this turn. So we're gonna have to wait an additional turn in order for us to be able to recruit. We have to wait for our police force to get stronger this turn before we could recruit another South Vietnamese army brigade. So problematic that the, the brigade, the political cadres are there slowing us down a little bit, but not that big of a deal because the police force in Mekong has been built up to such a high level. Now let's take a look at the central part of South Vietnam, where we've had the, by far the most action throughout the camp, the two years of the campaign so far. Not too much in um, our two provinces, Cam Ranh here and then Quy Nong. This actually has been reduced by special forces from five down to four. This one did increase by one, but special forces were able to take one of those out. We did get some North of East Army Brigades showing up in these two. So this is gonna be, I think, a lot easier to handle. We're still gonna be generating Viet Cong every season. We're still gonna have this kind of slow burning insurgency that we're gonna kind of have to keep a lid on. But I think if we can take out these remote units pretty quickly, we should be able to stabilize this region pretty well. However, that's not necessarily the case here for Quang Nai. So we look, we have once again had four North Vietnamese Army Brigades show up in the remote areas here. Now, the political cadres have been reduced down in here. They've kind of slowly been whittled away over time. So it's gonna be imperative for us, I think, to get up here and to try to take out some of these units as quickly as possible so that this doesn't become another firebox here over the course of the next year. But the other interesting part up here, political cadres have shown up in Quang Tri. This is bad because that means there's anti-aircraft here, even though we cleared out the North Vietnamese Army regiments. We're gonna to have to get troops up here to kind of take care of, well, as soon as the Viet Cong show up, which is gonna be probably, yeah, in three months or so, there's gonna to start to be Viet Cong forces show up up here. So we're gonna to need to kind of handle this. And it's kind of far away from home, which gets me to the last thing I'd like to show, which is how we move units in the game. Because we have kind of talked about, we haven't really talked specifically how that works. So let's take a look at that in detail. So if we look at the Da Dang province, just to get an idea for what's going on, and we can talk about movement that way, still considerably a hot spot here. There's four Viet Cong forces, Two North Vietnamese uh, Army Brigades have shown up here. And if you'll notice, a lot of our military units, these two line brigades have been knocked out. So we're going to have to kind of figure out what we're going to do with those. But let's talk a little bit about movement. Movement within zones, within provinces, is free. So we could move, for example, this brigade that's down in the base area up to the remote area and back and forth. We can do whatever we want with both air and ground units within a province. However, uh, units can move, also can move one province, ground units, let's talk about that, ground units can move one province adjacent and suffer no consequences. So we could take this uh, first cavalry, second brigade, move them up here to Hue and move them into the remote areas. It would have shifted one province, so it would stay at the same level. Now you can move more. But every time you move, a, if you move a second province via ground movement, you have to take an additional step loss. So uh, if we were to move this unit here from up to Hue and then continue on up to Quang Tri, it would suffer its third step loss and be completely depleted. So that's how movement works in the game. And that actually gets to the point here about how we're going to have to be careful of getting, we got to get forces from Da Nang up to Quang Tri. We've got to start to shift all of our forces that are a little bit south of here into these areas to take care of these hotspots. So in the game, you're constantly kind of figuring out how you're going to shift your ground forces around to be able to handle the latest threats. Now, air units work a little bit differently. I'm speaking, I'm gonna move a helicopter down from Quang Tree just for an example. Air units likewise can move for free within provinces. There's no problem there. They can move any place on the, in South Vietnam. Um, but you can only do that, you have seven of those moves per season. So we could move as freely as we want helicopters within provinces, but we can only move seven from one province to another province. They could go all the way across the map if they want to, but you can only do that with seven units per turn, per season. And so that's basically how movement works within the game. And with that, we've now explained every single mechanic in the game. And so we're gonna go back, let's zoom out, and the turns now should start to go considerably faster too. So as we head into 1977, two military goals. First, we're gonna to have to shift some of our troops from the southern part of South Vietnam, more up here to handle the hotspots of Quang Nai, Da Nang, and then increasingly even up here to the very far north in Quang Tri. So that's gonna be our military priority, as well as making sure we take care of these North Vietnamese army regiments in the remote areas and not letting any of the other provinces get out of hand. With the third factor, it's very likely now that we're gonna see the Tet Offensive, probably 50-50, that we'll see the Tet Offensive 
offensive in 1967. So we're going to have to keep recovering our forces and make sure we don't deplete these. So we're going to have troops ready to go for when that Tet Offensive goes crazy. So with that, let's go about six months ahead and we'll take a look and see how we've done. July 1967, cautiously feeling a little bit optimistic here that we're in a good spot, at least for right now. Let's take a look at what's happened. Southern part of South Vietnam, good news for Saigon. We can now match with our South Vietnamese army brigades the political inference here, reducing the Saigon political situation to neutral, which means that no Viet Cong forces are recruited in the area. So we've stabilized Saigon. Mekong Delta, likewise with its big police forces stable, and then Bien Ho down here, just kind of a seething, smoldering insurgency that we can just have a small military presence and kind of take care of. So southern Vietnam, southern South, South Vietnam looking pretty good right now. Likewise, central areas of South Vietnam looking okay. We've got um, in a kind of, again, a generally two strength point insurgencies that bubble up each season that we have to kind of bring enough forces in. Um, but we've been able to clear out the remote areas of North Vietnamese. Likewise, in Quang Nai, uh, there's still a little bit. I mean, they've got a North Vietnamese regiment that's dropped down, but we've been able to reduce most of the military presence here. I think within another season, we should have this relatively, relatively stabilized. It's going to look a lot like perhaps this one, but maybe even in a few months because there's only four, uh, two political cadres here, perhaps we can bring this down and bring the level of insurgency down a little bit. Up in the north, we've, kind of, we've taken care of Da Nang. We used a large helicopter presence to take care of that. That's going to go to kind of a low seething level of insurgency. Do want to see if we can take care of these uh, North Vietnamese army brigades in Hue before the end of the year. And then we have, again, a smoldering insurgency that we really can't do much about up here in uh, Quang Tri, up in the very far north. Lastly, on a big note, it's looking pretty likely, I'd say 75% chance that we're going to see a Tet Offensive. So we have indications of a major North Vietnamese offensive coming up in January of 1968. To that degree, we've recycled a lot. We've got seven of our army brigades just coming into the recovery zone. A couple more working their way through it. We've brought a few more out. So we're trying to get all our forces to maximum strength before January so we can meet this offensive. One thing I forgot to mention as we head to the back half of 1967 is we built our third South Vietnamese uh, army brigade up in the Mekong Delta. So we're gaining some strength up there. Love to be able to flip Saigon to be able to start building it, but we're still quite a ways from that too. Our goals for the upcoming six months are to kind of keep, uh, to finish off the, the battle here in Quang Nai, perhaps take out these units in Hue and just again, recover, 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 because we know the Tet Offensive is coming. December 1967, and we have reached the point of greatest stability in this conflict so far. Let's take a look at some of the provinces to see what I mean. Southern part of South Vietnam, pretty much even. Mekong with its police forces, okay. Saigon has reached a neutral standpoint, so no more Viet Cong forces appearing here. This is just, again, a small, seething, smoldering insurgency that we can pretty easily handle here in Bien Ho. Central part of the country continues to be a seething hotbed of kind of insurgency, but nothing that we really haven't been able to control. But every time we get two strength points worth of Viet Cong forces that emerge and we bring in military forces to take care of them. Ideally, I'd like, I think we could lower the, the temperature here in, for example, Quang Nai, but we just haven't been able to bring it. We haven't had the capacity and the bandwidth to bring in it to try to take out these anti-aircraft assets yet. So until we can do that and bring in helicopters that won't ramp up the kind of the insurgency level, we haven't really been able to kind of control this that well. The North looks as good as it has since the start of the war. Again, kind of very low level insurgencies in Da Nang and Quang Tri, and we've been able to com completely neutralize Hue up in the, the middle of the North up in here. So all in all, looking pretty good. However, we've reached the point in the game now at the end of the year, December 1967, where we replenish the political cadres. We have nine political cadres out of action at the moment. And on the current year's die roll for them, for the uh, North Vietnamese to bring in nine political cadres, they need a die roll of seven or greater. If we get a seven or greater, it triggers the Tet Offensive and the whole country erupts in combat. Now, I, to be totally honest, I kind of want a seven because if we get a seven, these political cadres in Saigon that have been hard to take care of would turn into military forces, which we can destroy. And that would allow us, I think, to get a head start on recruiting South Viet and building the police force in Saigon. So I'm, half of me wants a seven and half of me doesn't. Here's the roll. Let's see what we get. Oh, a six. Okay. 
So no Tet Offensive. When we get to 1968, there's absolutely a Tet Offensive. So we know that the Tet Offensive will 100% be coming next year. But I'll set up the year now and then we'll take a look uh, before we jump into next year. January 1968, the North Vietnamese have reinforced their positions. Let's take a look and see what happened. The southern part of South Vietnam, Mekong, still steady as she goes. Saigon, unfortunately, has brought in more political cadres, which means the insurgency will rekindle here. So we're going to have to fight back there. Likewise, three North Vietnamese Army brigades up here in the remote lands in Bien Ho. This will get a little bit hotter. Hopefully, we can take those out pretty quickly. Central part of South Vietnam, still, again, a raging insurgency here. More North Vietnamese Army brigades up in the remote lands. This year, I want to try to concentrate on these anti-aircraft units because when the Tet Offensive starts, Arts, these don't get placed. So this would be a good year to concentrate on reducing those so we'll be able to go right after the ground forces with our helicopters as the Tet Offensive gets launched because we know the Tet Offensive is going to launch in January of next year. It has to launch then. Interestingly, up here, Quang Tri, three brigades of North Vietnamese have shown up in the remote lands. So we're going to want to try to take those out pretty quickly. Otherwise, more insurgencies here in Da Nang. This will pick up the pace as well as some North Vietnamese infantry to keep an eye on up there. So in with that, I'm going to end this episode here. Uh, we will be back to pick up the action in January of 1968. Let me know down in the comments uh, if you have thoughts, observations. But uh, feeling relatively controlled right now, but we really need to pick up the pace of building the uh, South Vietnamese Army. I actually had our special operations concentrate on Bien Ho to try to take out this political cadre because if we could have, we could have reduced it. We could have had enough South Vietnamese army reg brigades to come in here and to swing this so we could start building a police force there but our political our um, special operations failed three times there which it's a relatively low percentage role but uh, yeah it didn't happen so we'll be back in january 1968 in episode three to continue on I'll put a link to it right here as soon as it's ready take care everybody